I hate the saying, you don't owe anyone anything. Wrong. We owe each other everything. The hypocrisy here is startling. Hey everybody, it's Tony with Big T Bariatric and I'm back at you with another video and today we're going to talk about Fat Fab Feminist. She's one of the more dangerous fat talkers out there with over 118,000 followers on TikTok. She's also been instrumental in helping put forward the fat protection bill in New York City. I don't think that's a good idea because if you try to make fat people more comfortable in their fatness, they're not going to want to change. I think it's a good thing that they don't fit in smaller spaces because then it makes them decide that they need to change in order to fit in society. But instead, people like her are out there trying to change society to make it more comfortable for fat people, and that's not a good thing. Now it's gonna be harder for employers to say, you know what, I don't think you can do this job because of your size, I don't think I'm gonna hire you. Now they could probably get sued for discrimination. So now employers have to hire fat people, which can make the workplace more dangerous. Now I'm sure she disagrees with some of this, but we're gonna get into that here in a moment. If you could do me a huge favor, look down below and see if you're still subscribed to my channel. If you're not, hit that button for me, I greatly appreciate it. Help me get to 10,000 subscribers. Help get this message out there that it's not okay to be obese, that it's very dangerous and it's very harmful, and TikTokers and fat activists like Fat Fat Feminists are killing people and they need to be stopped. Help me get that message out there. Leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Help the algorithm, let's get this thing going. I really appreciate it. Now let's get into the review. In the context of boycott, I keep seeing this rhetoric where if you're still shopping at Starbucks and McDonald's and you're not participating in the boycott, you're engaging in big back behavior, you're greedy, or just like, you're, you're fat. Like you just, you're, you're so fat, you can't not eat McDonald's. And I just find that so funny because this is the average look that I've seen for the people who aren't participating in these boycotts. Like I saw this TikTok and I guess there's a collab between Stanley and Starbucks and I was like, oh, but we're, we're not buying it. All of the comments were just talking about, I saw one comment that was like about the boycott and all the other comments were like, where do I get it? I thought it wasn't out. Da -da -da. And it's all from these other thin white women who care more about their brand loyalty and not disrupting their comfort than supporting a cause. I saw some creator on here with 11 million followers who filmed themselves at the new McDonald's like drinks and was like, come with me to try all the new flavor. Girl, it's not fat behavior to not be able to engage in this boycott because my fat ass is completely fine boycotting. The issue is, People, particularly Americans, particularly white Americans, do not understand how to put their comfort aside for the collective. This group of people in particular does not understand how to exist in discomfort. And marginalized people in general are more used, but their comfort is paramount. The, nothing else matters to them. And I know it's not a big deal, but those are the people who aren't boycotting. People prioritizing their own privilege and comfort over the collective. So again, it's like a small thing to be hung up on. But again, fat phobic language is insidious and like it's a small thing. I know it's a collective joke and it generally like, isn't that big of a deal. But it just gets frustrating catching strays because like it's not even us. I'm a fatty in solidarity and I've been getting the deadly lemonade instead of Starbucks, so. It doesn't really look like you've boycotted a meal in a very long time and I doubt that you've stopped eating McDonald's. But here's the thing about this. Why are you forcing other people to participate in your boycotts? People don't have to, saying, oh, all these white women, you know, they don't understand discomfort and they're just all about their brand loyalty. Really? Like, that's your whole argument that it's the thin white women who are the problem because they don't join your boycott. I don't even know why you're boycotting or who or what. Like, I don't get it. What you think and what you believe don't really matter to me unless you're out there harming people with your fat rhetoric. Yes, you should be boycotting McDonald's. You should be boycotting these restaurants that help promote obesity. You shouldn't be eating at those places for those reasons. But you actually see something out there that's harming people like obesity and you promote it. You promote it all over the place. You make it okay to be fat. You make it more comfortable to be fat. You're not actively out there trying to warn people against something that's harmful to them. Obesity is killing more people than anything, more than wars, more than any disease. Obesity is out there devastating people's lives. It's devastating your own life, but you only care about your own stupid politics you're gonna find a new enemy there's gonna be a new boogeyman for you to chase after like politics change but what matters is health right health is what matters and you're out there promoting obesity acting like it's okay to be fat when in reality it's killing people and that's what makes you disgusting even when my video has nothing nothing 
to do with me being fat, y'all find a way to make me being fat part of the video. I was there complaining about inflation, which is something that we are all struggling with, and just like prices in New York in general. I got deodorant, Aquaphor, and toilet paper for 50 bucks. Crazy. But somehow me talking about getting Aquaphor for $20, my body has to be brought into it. And like, y'all are like, Victoria, why are you always talking about being fat? I literally do not have a choice. Because even if the content that I'm making has nothing to do with my body, y'all make it so apparent that you do not see me as a person, you see me as a fat person. And I can only be fat to you. And I took a little bit of a break talking about fat liberation, just like fat issues in general, online because I was so tired of people taking my content and putting it on other apps where people just make fun of me. Because I don't care if you have a problem with me being fat, what I do have a problem with is being misunderstood and people making me seem like I'm this malicious person. And I just like didn't have the energy, so I just like, I took a break. So I, just, I took a break because I'm fucking human. And even in the like content that I've been making content about like the movies I've been watching, about just like my existence in everyday life, and still I get comments about my body all the time. And this is why I always talk about fat liberation and why it's so important to me. Because the world is so unnecessarily cruel to fat people for no reason that I quite literally do not have the choice but to be an activist. Because if I don't work to make the world a better place for myself and other fat people, I'll just have to spend the rest of my life being degraded and dehumanized for being fat? No. So don't you worry. In 2024, the fat lib content is coming back in full swing. And I'll make sure to tag you. Also, I feel like this shirt is very appropriate. Everything you just said was very hypocritical. Why do you have to make it all about my fat body? I can't even put a post out there about inflation, but of course you're still gonna vote for the candidates that make inflation worse, right? But again, I'm not trying to make this political. You're fat, fat feminist, right? That's your whole spiel, that's your whole personality. That's what you're projecting into the world, that's who you are. You make everything about your weight. You're out there promoting bills about weight. Most of your content is about your weight and how proud you are that you're fat. But when somebody makes a comment about your size, oh, I'm, I'm offended. Oh, Oh, why are you only talking about my size as if that's who I am? That's all you're making yourself out to be. You're the fat liberation expert, right? Like that's what you're putting out there into the world and then you're you're, you're just like, oh, I, I, I need to take a break from it because I'm just getting all of this backlash. It's like, well, maybe you should stop harming people with your content. Maybe then you would stop getting less hate about being fat. Now, I don't advocate hating somebody because they're fat, but we need to get the message out there that it's not okay to be fat, that being fat is dangerous and you're gonna kill yourself if you continue down the path that you're going. But of course, you don't believe that, do you? No, you're just trying to change society. You're just trying to make the world a better place for fat people because you don't like being uncomfortable in your fat body. But instead of blaming yourself for what you did to yourself, and instead of deciding to put the hard work into changing, you just want to make society easier for yourself. And that's where the danger is going to come in. That's where the harm is going to come in. You don't realize that being fat is self-hatred. Has anyone figured out how to make money while also not selling your soul to capitalism? Um, I graduated last year from NYU, cum laude, like, with honor. And, like, I did everything I was supposed to. But, like, I still haven't found a job that will allow me to survive in New York and not be exploited and not give up my morals. Like, I just want to work a job where I'm not, like, actively being a bad person. And, like, I have social media and I have, like, support from my family, so, like, it is a really privileged position of me to like care about the moral implications of my work. And I know that's not something that everyone is able to consider, but it's just like, it's so draining and soul crushing knowing that like every possible job that exists, like either you are going to be exploited or you are exploiting someone. Like theoretically, I would love to work at a nonprofit, but every single person I know that has worked as a nonprofit talks about how they were exploited by their job. So they get burnt out by like the second or third year and they can't keep doing the work that they want to do because they're being abused by the system. And then if I work at a regular job, I'm still, you know, a worker, so I'm being exploited under capitalism. But also, I'm making ethically gray, morally gray decisions and doing things that I may not actually agree with. So it's like, what do I do? I just want a job that will pay me enough to survive and I don't have to like sell my soul to do it. That will also hire fat people. So if you have any suggestions or you're hiring, Please let me know. Thanks. I already said it earlier in this video, but you are a major hypocrite. You talk about all these morals and, and you don't want to exploit people, but you make money off of your TikTok exploiting people. 
That's your whole fat thing, right? You're a fat activist, you're into fat liberation, oh, you're a superstar out there. But you're doing something that's very, very immoral. You are killing people with your TikTok. Yes, you're telling people it's okay to be fat, as I just ranted on, and but here you are saying, oh, I just want a job where I don't exploit people, where I just want something that's all about my morals. But you don't seem to have any morals because you don't realize how dangerous your TikTok is. You don't realize how harmful you're being. You think you're just making the world a better place, but in reality, you're making it a much worse place. You don't see how your obesity is killing yourself. You don't see the diseases and the issues that you're setting yourself up for later. Yeah, you're only 23 years old right now. You may not see too many side effects from being obese, other than society is, is a little difficult for you. Also, you finding a job is probably because of your obesity. It's gonna be difficult to go out there and find a job that you can physically do. That's part of it, but you really don't wanna admit that to yourself yet, that it's difficult to find a job that you have to stand on your feet for eight hours a day. But it's gonna be difficult to find a job at your size, promoting fatness. What, do you also want your employer to put a bidet in the bathroom for you because you can't wipe yourself? So all this talk about morality and you just wanna help people and you don't wanna exploit people, and yet that's what you do every single day when you push this fat activist nonsense. You're exploiting fat people. You're exploiting fat people to make money. And you're telling them it's okay to be fat. And you're telling them they don't have to change. And every single day that they don't change is one day closer to their death. And yeah, we're all gonna die. I know you're gonna say that. We're all gonna die one day. But the more you push people to eat and be fat and be merry and, and happy, but the more you force people to not have to change and to get more comfortable and to join your little fat community, the more and more dangerous you become. So we can all agree that this is a deeply insecure man, right? All he wants in the entire world is to be respected for his comedy and his crap, but no one cares about his comedy. Nobody cares about what he has to say. People just care about him because he's hot. And that makes him feel really insecure. So what did he do? He lashed out like a child, did what he could to isolate his mostly female audience and pander to insult men. And he just reminds me of like former fat people that become thin and start hating all fat people. Bear with me. As a fat person, I have known many a fat person who loses weight and didn't deal with their insecurities, didn't deal with their personal self-esteem issues, and thought that losing weight was going to fix all their problems. So when they lost all that weight and they still hated themselves, they got mad. They didn't know what to do and instead of looking inward, they lash out at the people in the former community. And that is why former fat people are the most notorious fat folk. And I think a similar thing is happening to this man. No one cared what he had to say before he got his plastic surgery, glow up, whatever it was. And now that he has all the attention that he desperately wanted, but it's not for his comedy, it has made him, in my opinion, even more insecure. If you wanna learn more about that, this person did an amazing video. But let this situation just be a reminder to deal with your shit. No amount of weight loss, no amount of plastic surgery, no amount of trends and makeup and whatever is going to make you like yourself. If you do not do the work, you will be unhappy. It doesn't matter how much money you're making, how many fans you have. If you don't like yourself, whatever you change about yourself, whatever happens, you will still be miserable at the end of the day. Self-love genuinely is the most life-changing thing that you can do as a person. And like, I know I talk about learning to love yourself and like how important it is, but this is the reason why. It is so evident to the rest of the world when you don't like yourself. I'm not saying you have to be obsessed with yourself, but you need to find peace. You need to find peace. Whatever that looks like for you, just come to terms with who you are, what you look like, and like, just be okay with it. Because changing your appearance will not fix the way you feel on the inside. Again, more hypocrisy from Fat Fat Feminist. Now this isn't gonna be about Matt Rife, all right? So whatever your feelings about him, I don't care. She talks about being insecure and, and not having self-esteem and, and all this wonderful stuff. But that's why you stay fat, right? Because you don't have any self-esteem or self-respect for yourself. So you wanna join this positive community of fat activism. That's why you push your views on other people. And so partly why I wanted to respond to this is because she's talking about people like me. The reason why I've lost 200 pounds and then now I go on here and call myself a fat phobe, which I am very proudly fat phobic, is because I have no self-respect for myself, because I'm insecure, so I need to attack fat people. No, the reason why I lost weight is because it became dangerous for me to stay at the weight that I was. I was very near death. My blood pressure was skyrocketing. I was in a tremendous amount of pain. And the older I got, the more I realized that I wasn't gonna make it to 40, which I'll be 40 next month. 
if I continued down the road I was going to be. I've had many doctors tell me I was not gonna make it to 40, I wouldn't have more than 10 more years to live when I was 30 years old because the consequences of my obesity was catching up to me. So I decided to make a change. And now I'm out here warning other people that this is what you're in for if you continue to grow in size. It's not about being insecure. I'm more secure about myself than I've probably ever been losing this weight. It's still a problem because I still see myself as that fat person. I'm still afraid to take pictures. I'm still afraid to put myself out there. I haven't joined any dating sites because I still think women will think I'm too fat and won't want to date me. I just want to wait till I lose a little bit more weight so I'm more comfortable with myself. But that's what happens when you lose weight. You do gain that self-respect. You do feel better about yourself. You do have more energy. You're able to participate in life better. You're able to find better jobs. Like yeah, when you lose weight, everything in your life does get better. That's what you don't understand. You're so caught up in fighting against this whole diet culture thing that you don't realize losing weight will make your life better. You claim that society hates you and hates fat people, but that's not true. It just wasn't built for you. People weren't as big as you are now. It's you that has changed. It's your body size that is the problem that's making life more difficult for you, but you don't wanna change yourself because you are so insecure, because you do hate yourself, you need to grab onto any positivity you can find within the fat activist community. And now you're out there pushing this nonsense out there, not realizing that you're the ultimate hypocrite here, full of self-loathing and self-hatred. There's nothing positive about your size. There's nothing positive about what you're putting out there, thinking you're just this ultimate moral person who wants to make the world a better place when you're actively making it a worse place. There's nothing moral or good about what you're doing. I hate the saying, you don't owe anyone anything. Wrong. We owe each other everything. I feel like the point of that saying originally was like, don't overextend yourself, don't give more than you can, you know? Don't feel forced to do anything for anyone. That kind of thing. But I feel like it's morphed into something that's like really not productive. Especially like in terms of like your friends. I'm not talking about like toxic relationships or whatever. I'm talking about like situations like with your friends. I feel like, yeah, you do owe your friends things. You like, all we have in this life is community and the people around us. I feel like we owe them our best. You know what I mean? Like I saw this one person on Twitter talking about how they won't take their friends to the airport because they don't owe anyone anything. Like, no. I mean, I guess technically sure you don't owe your friends that. But if you can and you have the ability, like, why not be there for your friends? Outside your family and your romantic partners, like, these are the most important people in your life. You should care about them. And, like, this Tumblr post is exactly what I mean. I don't care anymore. I think we should burden each other. And, yes, this includes a certain degree of tolerance for emotional burden. Like, why are my friends apologizing for trauma dumping when they're venting to me about, like, a rough day? That's not what that means. And even if it was, we're friends. Like, you're supposed to vent to me. My love for you and loyalty to you is not dependent on how easy you make it for me to love you. That line, I need it tattooed on the inside of my eyelid so I remember. I don't value you for how little trouble you cause me. I want to learn how to take you for who you are instead of who I want you to be or who you think I should be. Like, this is love. This is how we're supposed to love one another. We are all we have. Our friends, our community is all that we have. If you can't rely on the people around you to support you when you need them, how is that different than being alone? The hypocrisy here is startling. People like her use that statement, I don't owe anybody anything, to relate to their diet. I don't owe you to be skinny. I don't owe you to be on a diet. I don't owe you to lose weight. But then she says you owe each other everything. Why don't you think that you owe somebody who you say that you love and care about your health? If you actually care about people and want them to be healthier and you want them to be happy, why aren't you encouraging them to get healthy? Because if you really wanted to support someone, you would do what I'm doing right now. And you would tell them that being obese is a burden on your life, that you are harming yourself and you're harming others with your message. But you don't want to hear that. You think that's nonsense. But you owe each other everything, right? Including your health, including sitting somebody down and telling them the hard truth that, hey, you're getting a little big there, honey. Maybe it's time for you to start losing weight so that you can live longer, so you can live a happier, healthier life. But you don't want to hear that message. So again, more hypocrisy here from Fat Fat Feminist. Super prefer a gym girl over a fat girl because it's like, why are you fat? No discipline. I have a challenge for the gym bros. 
how about having a personality that isn't hating fat people, specifically hating fat women, and going to the gym? Because outside of those two things, do you have an identity? Like, is there any substance to you at all? Because I don't know what it is. I don't know why y'all are just so, so vexed by fat women that all you do is just like, mm, I don't want that bitch. I we don't want you. Like, I don't know any fat women that like are chasing after men that like are very clearly like not interested in us. Because the thing is, when a man is not interested in a fat woman, like y'all make it so abundantly clear because you don't even look us in the goddamn fucking eyes. Like y'all treat us like fucking scum. Why would any self-respecting human being want to interact with someone who so clearly despise our fucking existence. Y'all are obsessed. Do you have any personality outside of being overweight? Like, just because you go to the gym, suddenly that, that's all you are is just a gym bro and that you deserve all this hatred? Again, just because somebody isn't interested in you and they don't prefer you because you're overweight doesn't mean they hate you. Where's this whole argument coming from? Are you projecting hard enough there, fat, fat feminist? And then you say, oh, we don't want you. Really? You would date that person if they were interested in you. Just because they don't date you because they want somebody who fits their own personality and lifestyle, who works out and goes to the gym, doesn't mean they hate you. It just means they don't want somebody who's gonna be lazy and eating Doritos on the couch while they go to the gym and work out. I would prefer to meet somebody who was on a weight loss journey with me, who would eat better and help me eat better, who would live a healthier lifestyle so that they don't encourage me to fall back and get back into my old eating habits. So would I date an overweight person? Yes, I would consider it, but not if they're a fat activist or into fat liberation, because I don't want somebody who's going to live completely differently than me when it comes to that. I want somebody who's going to help encourage me and promote my health over anything else. So yeah, somebody who goes to the gym with me, somebody who encourages me to work out, somebody who wants to go on a walk with me, somebody who's going to eat healthier meals with me. That's the kind of person that I would want to be with. Doesn't mean I hate you. If you're an overweight woman and you're watching this, it doesn't mean that I hate your guts because I wouldn't date you. I just don't think that our personalities would clash too well. I think you would probably be more of a liability to me and I would end up falling into your lifestyle habits of not exercising, of overeating, and I don't want that in my life. I've already lived that life. It, it's, it's in my past now. I want nothing to do with it. And so I'm not going to date somebody who would try to get me back into that lifestyle. It's not hatred. But then to get on there and say, is that all you are? Is you're a gym bro? When in reality, all you do is push forward fat liberation and how proud you are to be fat and promoting all these bills that make it easier for fat people makes you the ultimate hypocrite. Anyways, that's my video for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, leave a like, leave a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. If you want to join, we do have Big T Bariatric memberships down below. Thank you for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. I love you. God bless you.